Here we go. Great, we're on, we're in. Um, welcome to day two of Strawberry Picking, everybody. Thanks for coming and joining us to ask some questions to today's writers. Um, but I'd like to introduce you to our panel host for today, uh, Danusha Samal. Welcome, Danusha. Um, I'm handing over to you. Great. Um, hi, everybody. So um, I let's. I guess we should all just say who everyone is and things. Um, I'm going to go through the order that I've got here, but um, I've got Emily first. So Emily, tell us a bit about yourself and the piece you wrote, and maybe without any spoilers, just a bit about what what your piece is about. Um, hi, my name is Emily. I wrote the writer's final act. Um, it was about a writer who ended up getting murdered, and it's a who done it. Um, but it's narrated by death himself and they're on a bit of a time crunch because in order for him to pass over he has to finish his play which is his biography but he doesn't know who killed him so he needs to find out who the murderer is so that he can finish his play and pass over to the next world wow brilliant um oh my god i've, I've got raw laptop written here and i <laughs> hi my name's theodora um theodora. i wrote does anyone remember laughter it's okay like a coming of age play, quite dreamy about um, a girl called Margot and her sort of realizing that she has to grow up, but she doesn't have to let go of being a child. Cool, okay. Um, and then I've got Elsa. Um, yeah, hi, I'm Elsa. Um, I wrote the play Fun House. Um, and it's a play about the 1970s children's television industry, which now is like, clouded in scandal and stuff like that yeah. but it's kind of a look from the people that were within it cool. and then lily hi um, i'm lily i wrote a lullaby to my heart and it's really about a young person kind of na navigating their way through their mental health and trying to find peace in it and finding peace in like what they wouldn't expect to you yeah cool so i'm assuming that you've all now got to see your pieces for the first time right was was that say or did you watch like rough cuts beforehand today today very exciting um so we're gonna try and take questions from people in the chat but also i'd love to just talk a bit about what the sensation of watching your work done like this was for you guys if anyone wants to jump in um well i was so nervous about this like whole thing so obviously it's been really nervous to have like people watch something you wrote like these are your words and stuff and but it was um it was just so exciting to hear like so many like like to hear so many talented people that are also your friends read your work and do it so well and like it was just it was it was such a surreal thing to like hear the thing that I'd written like a couple of months ago for school work like be performed in such a good way and also like because of this whole situation like as a radio play it was just I just never expected to hear it like that. And it was, yeah, it was so cool. Cool. Um, what about the others of you? Was it, what was it like getting to hear or, li or watch it for the first time? Um, for me, it was like super exciting seeing, like Al said, like your work come to life and the characters actually becoming people and seeing like how the cast interpreted them. 
that was really, really cool to see. What about uh, you, Lily? Yeah, um, it's like what I was saying beforehand. It's quite scary. I felt I felt very kind of nervous up until watching it, but um, it was nice to watch it and nice to see what had been done with it. And also, I feel how I how I viewed it was gonna be was very different to how it turned out. But I think that's quite nice because it's just as like different people's perspective on the play kind of coming out. And I thought that was really nice to watch and. To see that, oh yeah, that, like that's that's really good. Like I liked it a lot. Yeah, cool. Um, it's interesting, isn't it, that you can, as a writer, have loads of uh, views of how the show might be, and be really surprised, but pleasantly, by by how an actor might then take it and interpret it, or a director. Um, Emily, what about you? What was the kind of sensation of getting to to hear it? I suppose for the first time. It was so. It was almost like seeing it for the first time, like, because obviously we wrote the plays ages ago. And so I almost, I forgot a lot of sort of what I'd written down and stuff like that. And when you write it to be performed on a stage, you have a very different vision in your mind than what actually ends up being the product. And obviously they switch around the genders of the characters and who I envisioned who playing. And I just, I liked it a lot because it, it was almost a completely different play. And I think it was nice to sort of see somebody else have an influence on your work rather than just your own mind and how you wanted to see it. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, I'll encourage people again, when if you want questions to put through to the writers, please place them in the chat and then we'll get them through here on Zoom. Um, anything that you want to know about what these guys how they how they got these ideas how it was navigating writing a completely new format um can you can any of you talk me through a little bit maybe bit by bit I'll ask each of you but how what the process was so obviously you wrote your plays for strawberry picking assuming that they were going to be on stage when did you send those all in when did you sort of say goodbye to it as a theatre play um mm -hmm. Well, we sent the plays in on um, in like March, like ages ago. And then when it was announced whose plays got picked, like the school still didn't know what was going on. So right. we were all still in lockdown and we were like, and how how are we going to do the play? Like, because not because no one knew anything. And then um, all the directors got and then we got told and the director got told like, these aren't going to be like, well, right now they're not going to be theatre productions. So it was kind of like a, like everyone was like, what's going on? Like all at the same time. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I mean, let's, because this is interesting because it's sort of what I wanted to ask and we've had a question through, through about this. What were, were there any major changes from your original script because it had to be online? And I'm guessing it was. So how did each of you, uh, I'll just kind of go around, but how did you then, start thinking about adapting um should we start with Theodora because you're you're right on my left um there wasn't really any major changes I but there was one big one which was um the stop motion scene which was originally a physical piece to show like um them playing around in the dream world and it was between me and Alice we were discussing like how we would make that happen because we knew we wouldn't be able to do it with the cast and we just thought stop motion would be really fun to do and I had loads of like toys that I didn't have anymore. And also it like links to being a child and mucking about and playing around. So we thought that Lego would be the best way to go with it. That's really, so that was sort of your main big change? Yeah, pretty much. Anyone else did you feel like, because uh, another question is, was it hard to let go of the control and pass it over? So was there anything you had to get rid of or adapt that you sort of really missed? Um, or found difficult to let go of? Well, um, with my play, I feel as though it was quite a theatrical play. So I think that did kind of present as a challenge to the director, who's actually a very good friend of mine, but she handled it so, so well, like the product, like how she was able to do it. And there were things in it that I didn't even like write, but like they, it was put in and I was like wow that's such a like lovely touch and I, oh I didn't I didn't look at it to be like that but 
it's really it works really nicely and it's really lovely and um yeah but um in terms of me having to adapt it um it was really Vings the director who just like took took it on board like took made do, made those adaptions herself and it was kind of like down to her and yeah it's, it's odd to like not really have that much I guess say or control over your play but at the same time it's really about a shared creative process mm. so I wrote it but at the same time I, I feel like it's it's the director's project as, as much as it is mine so what she did with it was lovely so yeah yeah, I think it's always an interesting part of the the kind of writing process, isn't it? It's you write alone a lot of the time, but then you hand it over to someone and it becomes a team effort, which is always kind of exciting because then loads of brains are involved in it as opposed to just one. Um, for the rest of you, what was there any other like Emily? I guess yours was very. It goes into so many broad ter- like absurd and huge territories, which actually quite lend themselves to audio. So how did you? adapt it did you have to do a lot of work in changing it from the theatrical script or um I think definitely letting go was one of the things that I had to contend with because in my mind you know there was going to be this big dance number um at the beginning there was going to be all of these crazy things there was going to be sort of um sort of it was going to be quite mad and there was going to be sort of glitter and party poppers and it was going to be very absurd but I think it it was disappointing at first that those things wouldn't be able to happen but then I sort of realized that through audio it sort of became more of a unique viewing experience because then whoever was listening could think about what that dance number would have been you know what would have been happening and I think it sort of it definitely made the play more imaginative um, because obviously the audience would have to think about their own view of the characters rather than just having us presenting things so I think it definitely made it more engaging in that regard but I did have to let go of some things that I really enjoyed writing about. Yeah this was interesting because then people have to imagine death in their own um, their own imaginary rather than having it in front of them so I guess yeah you're right you hand over agency to the audience in that in an audio drama in a way that maybe you don't in the same way with theatre. And what about you, Elsa? Did you, did, oh no, you, yeah, you, did you have to make any big changes? Or? Um, I think, I don't know if there were any big changes because um, like my, um, my place just quite a lot of dialogue. So it kind of, I think it lended itself quite well to radio because like it, in my, in my head when I was writing it, I was like, I'm writing this for a TV show and it's going to be like, like a whole, film whatever but um but like as soon as like as soon as the director told me that he was doing a radio play I was like oh that makes so much sense like because yeah it just fits so there wasn't really anything that needed to to change about it because so much of it you just needed to listen to anyway Mm -hmm. so did all your directors choose what form once you realised that the plays were going to be on in a different way, did they choose the form? Did you guys say, no, no, I really want it to be a film or like, I really want it to be audio? I know mine did. He chose what <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah. And was that the same for all of you? Did you kind of hand over to your director or did you go, I really yeah. want it to be this? Yeah. Um, I think my director made the made the choice which was I'm I'm thankful for the choice that it was in the medium it was but yeah um so that kind of leads me on to this then so you they choose the format it's not the way you originally wrote it are there any were there any moments in the final pieces that really surprised you that you, you were like oh that wasn't oh that was really loud um, that wasn't exactly what I thought was going to happen and and what was the reaction for that I'll start with Lily. Um, things in it made me think. I guess um, the ending was slightly changed and that just like a little bit of dialogue was cut off. So I was like, oh, okay, that's like a different ending, which I guess gives the play a different feel. And um, they're just, 
there were some parts in in general like I said before which I didn't even think to consider when writing it so seeing how they were executed in the play it was nice and I was like oh that's a really like gentle gentle nice touch so yeah interesting um what about you Theodora um for me I liked the shots that were used I think they were really really good and quite surprising of how impressive it was I think and it added to the story I think a lot as well and I was really surprised by how well it turned out I'm for it. yeah I mean especially because obviously some people everyone was seeing that really inventive filmmaking of like mm. not being in the same room as certain yeah. people <laughs> um having to be really kind of clever about how to get things across um I think I really lo- I, I, there's, I love some shots of like people's voices coming in and like mm. somebody playing the mum it was really good um let's uh oh god there's getting lots of questions now um any other any other um bits that really surprised you Elsa or Emily um I was <laughs> I think because I hadn't like but I basically handed in my play and then hadn't thought about it until we got like picked, but until they told us that our plays got picked. And and so when I was hearing it, I was like, I didn't realize how like fast my, my play went. Like, and I think my director did a really good job of just like having the, like the scenes move from one to the other without breaking them up that much. Cause I don't know, it just felt like it, like, it, like I think the way that he just kept things going felt like there wasn't a lull in it at any point. And I was like, wow, well done to my director. <laughs> but yeah, it was, so I, was, I was just, I was like, wow, this play is so fast. <laughs> yeah. That's interesting as well, because if you're with something for a long time, it's like seeing it on, on Realised, you can be really surprised by probably even your own writing. Yeah. Sometimes, right, can't you? Um, and Emily, did you find anything about it just really surprising? I think the casting was the main thing um, because the directors were given a cast of people that they had to choose between. And so when I heard who the cast was, because we were all on the same phone call, I sort of picked each of them with a certain character. And I think only one or two of them ended up being the characters that I thought they would. And... I think Sinead was the main one who ended up being the character I thought she'd be chosen as. And obviously she did a fantastic job and and her scenes were some of my favourite because of her voice was just so wonderful. But Chloe, who plays Death, was not who I was expecting to be that character at all. But she ended up taking it in a completely different direction than I was expecting. It ended up being quite quite fun and it ended up being like more sort of light-hearted rather than sort of being rude and sarcastic and I think she sort of she struck that balance very well and so it wasn't what I was expecting but it it ended up being really really surprising but in a good way and I think also just it kind of flowed like an audio book because there was the music between the scenes and I do I did quite like the way that sort of you had that sort of break to sort of process what happened in the last scene. So I thought that was a really good direction choice. So yeah, I was pleasantly surprised by the direction it was taken in. Was the music part of um, your original script or was that something that was added in later that you hadn't sort of envisioned? See, it wasn't actually, cause it was meant to sort of be, um, so if anyone's seen a whodunit, usually what happens is they interview all of the suspects back to back and you piece together the story and who's lying within each interview. And so usually it ends up being flipping between dialogue, but obviously because they weren't there in person, they couldn't do that. So I quite like the way that um, they made it so the story kind of built. So you got one version of the story and then you got the next one, which filled in the gaps. And so I did quite enjoy sort of the pace of gradually building up what happened rather than mm. flicking between them yeah it's uh, it did work really well and it's kind of it's interesting you add an extra medium of music and then you've got this other factor that perhaps on stage wouldn't work in quite the same way um I've got a question specifically for Lily actually it says Lily you mentioned 
in your intro that you wanted the piece to be gentle like a lullaby. Do you think that this transferred to the short film version? Um, I don't, I, cause I had such a like set idea on what it would look like. Obviously someone else is gonna have a very different approach to it and different perspective. So yeah, I would, I would say it did, it did transfer but I, I yeah I mean it's just but in a different in a different way to what I expected and also because there was like quite a lot of music like um what someone was saying before about the music I didn't actually envision it apart from one music part that I put in I didn't envision it with I, for some reason I didn't consider music when I was writing it so then to see that in there as well I was like oh, okay so this is another another thing but I do have in the play there were quite a lot of dream sequences mm -hmm. which was really interesting to see how they were executed because obviously when I was writing it I was writing it as a very physical play which was going to have like loads of like oh like theatrical things and like this character called Mr Sun who would like I, I don't know why I like imagined him like with like an actual like sun costume on like like a sun around his head and then but so then actually see it I think it was the dream sequences it was really nice um seeing it in a different way it did very different to what I expected but still nice so yeah yeah, and I thought, sorry, um, I thought the cast was brilliant. Um, they really, like, really like goods, and it was it was nice to see them do my work justice. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's funny because I watched them all, and I actually thought a lot of them had these really bold images that I was like, oh, they must have adapted that for screen or radio because that would have been really hard to do. Um, as a, on stage so it's interesting because a lot of them felt like because the images were so rich and the themes were so massive they kind of lended themselves to audio or, or film because you can be sometimes more suggestive in film and audio than you can on stage because on stage there's sort of nowhere to hide and some of those big ideas I mean did, did some of you feel like oh actually I'm quite glad that wasn't on stage because it works really really well like this I yeah I I think so because again like I said before when I was writing it I I like in my head I was writing it for like 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 a BBC One Monday Night Drama like that's what I was thinking in my head mm. so, so and obviously then like I handed it in I was like it's a play if it gets picked it will be like it will be far <laughs> far lower budget than I was thinking but um but to have it as a radio play like it meant that like I got to see it in my in my head in the same way that I was like I pictured it as I was writing it because mm -hmm. like I could just build it in a, like build the world around them in exactly the same way mm -hmm. but, yeah so I was I was quite happy about that and um I mean for all like some of the plays felt really personal some felt kind of big ideas um for you guys what were your inspirations um shall I, I just always go around and make it a bit easier but um like for example Theodora what sort of inspiration inspired you to, to write the piece that's another question we've got here sorry um I got a lot of inspiration from music that's a massive part of the play mm. um just listening to like lyrics of songs and then like talking to people I know um things I experienced and things like my family members have experienced and I just wanted to write it all out it was quite um therapeutic at times as well yeah so you, you just started completely from music that was the kind of thing yeah I would play music and just write okay so what like almost like a like what we were doing earlier the free writing thing but yeah <laughs> music based oh really interesting and then that's how the play got formed mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Uh, any? Uh, what about the others of you? Did you start in a different way? Did you start from a question or a real life event or something? Well, for me, I'd kind of, I was kind of struggling over what I wanted to write the play on, but I kind of had ideas for scenes from before I'd even written it, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And originally in the, when I originally thought about it, the, the ending scene was going to end with like the characters like splashing paint on each other because I wanted it to be colourful. I wanted to deal with a very 
sensitive topic and something which is uh, very personal to me but I wanted to deal with it in a light hot in a kind of I don't know like a gentle light way where it wasn't gonna be like oh like down and like oh so the person da, da, da. like mm. I wanted it to be like gentle and like like a lullaby you know what I'm saying like kind mm -hmm. so um it was yeah it was very very much from own as a personal experience and what like what Theodorus Theodorus said kind of therapeutic it was like I was kind of writing to myself at times um and yeah I just kind of I just sat down and I just started writing because it's like write about what you know so I just put like words on page and also some of them are actual conversation like conversations I've had with people so I was just like you know what let me just put it in there mm, okay um, what about you, Elsa? Um, well, uh, it came from with my with my niece. I watch a lot of like CBBS and stuff, and I was watching this um, show with my brother, and like it was it was crazy. It was called Show Me Show Me, and like it was like these two um, co-hosts who were supposed to be like best friends, and me and my brother were like, imagine if they hated each other. Like, and they just had to do this, but they just hated each other. And um, and I was like, oh, that'd be such a good idea for like a comedy play. So originally my play was just like a comedy about like two people hating, like two co-hosts hating each other. Um, but then wh when we did our workshops on it, um, like some of the people in my, in, who in my workshop were like, I can see this set in the seventies. And I was like, oh, cool. And then as I was writing it, I was like, I can't write like a children's television without spoiling it too much, but I can't write about the children's television industry in the 70s and just ignore the whole like major scandal that came along with it. And I'm, and like my dad loves showing me shows from the 70s anyway. And like, I, I followed all of it. Like I'm very interested in it anyway. So I was like, might as well write about it in my play and yeah so my play kind of turned from a like a wacky comedy to like what it is now that's a really massive transition did you get like once you found that dark side to it did you get really interested in that or did you I mean how did you, I don't know, massive, so you started with this kind of like quite light idea and then you end up in something really different did you feel that you were just obliged to do that or did you actually get really interested in that topic and then feel like you wanted to explore it further? I, I, I did get really interested in it because um, as soon as I was like, oh my gosh, yeah. I was talking, like I, I brought it up to my parents and my parents were like, yeah. And, and then we were talking about how like the worst, like one of the most horrible things aside from the actual like, like, like events that took place during like the scandals of it like mm. one of the worst things is knowing how many people knew about it and like and how many rumors there were and then we were talking about like how that lends itself to like the me too movement and stuff which is um stuff i'm very like passionate about anyway so i was like yeah that like i was really i then became really excited to write about something that lends itself so much to what the world looks like now and what like the the arts industry looks like now yeah, yeah really interesting um and what about you Emily um what was your kind of inspiration for the for the piece I had so many this live stream would be hours long if I got into it <laughs> um I I sort of I ended up um so whodunits have always been sort of a big part of like you know British culture it's, it's something that doesn't really I don't know of many other places that sort of have sort of those sort of whodunit classic murder mysteries and I've read them I've watched them um it's always been so fun sort of being like oh I think it was this person I think it was this person and I was talking to some of my friends about how much I love them. And I realized that not that many people our age, like really saw them. So that was like a must. I was like, oh, I've got to do a whodunit. Um, and uh, Knives Out came out um, a couple of months before we wrote the play. Sort of Murder on the Orient Express was sort of the main ones that were around during that time. 
and then you know obviously books and like stalking jack the ripper and there was a book version of murder on the orient express and so it derived from that and then i was reading the book thief at the time and then had to put it down to sort of get inspiration for the play and i was like but death is a very interesting character in the book thief and i think i I wanted to take something that was so old and so traditional and sort of make it more more fun and more modern because um, sort of obviously murder mysteries can get a bit repetitive and a lot of them have the same story beats. So I wanted to sort of do a twist on all of those story beats and make them more modern and more fun. And I think definitely I wanted to... I knew that I wanted to include death as a character because there's so many different you know tales and stories and theories about what happens after we die and I sort of I wanted to make it something that was its own mystery and that was more fun rather than looking at every obviously murder is probably not a very fun thing but stories and mysteries and you know what happens in life I wanted to yeah take something old and make it something new and I wanted to sort of show people that it's a really fun genre so I think I was just inspired by the genre and the idea of making it more fun. Right. Okay. So, I mean, that's, it's really, that's really interesting because there's like four really different perspectives and inspirations for starting a piece, all of which are are brilliant and very different from one another. Um, But I I find that really interesting. The reason that people start to write something, is it a personal thing? Is it a political issue they get galvanized about or a social issue? Is it a genre that they're really interested in and they want to explore? Uh, is it music? Is it is it inspired by another piece of art? So there's just, it's amazing how many different ways there are of starting a play um, and what can then lead you somewhere completely different. I'm, I'm imagining some of you ended up in places you didn't necessarily imagine your play would go. Um, because this, this question's been asked in a, in a slightly different way twice, so I'm going to kind of make it to one question, but having watched those final pieces and I'm I I really struggle with answering this question when I've ever been asked it as well um because I sort of think the flaws in your writing are there for you to learn from and also productions are about how people interpret them so these plays could be different if someone else did them but having watched them is there anything that you as the writer would add or change having seen them feel free to jump in anyway if you're really strong doing that I'd make mine a bit um, more easy to understand because I think it made sense in my head. And if you read it very sort of quite closely and read each individual line, you could piece it together. But then when it comes to the actual performance, you can't sort of reread and go back and be like, what was that bit? And I think I realized that um, if you weren't paying sort of very close attention it could you could miss something very easily and i think when you're writing a mystery you do want people to miss things but you also want them to remember the fact that it was there in the first place so that they mm-hmm. can go back and be like ah oh, that makes sense now so i think i would definitely make it more apparent sort of what was going to come back later rather than sort of brushing it a bit too far under the rug okay interesting what about the rest of you? Anyone else? Um, I'd shorten my dialogue because I think when I was writing it, I was very much writing it how I kind of speak and digest. Okay, well, no, not how I just speak, but like I was writing it in in a way which like I, I was reading it quite fast paced. So I was going from line to line, so it's kind of like bouncing off one another, like the lines. But then the actual um, the final piece it was like quite a lot slower than I'd like originally originally imagined. So I just, I'd cut down on the dialogue because I was listening back to it and I was like, some dialogue just doesn't need to be here. Like I don't, I, I felt like I was maybe like, I could have gotten to the point a bit quicker, but yeah. That's interesting. And I mean, that's a massive uh, lesson in dialogue all the time, isn't it? That mm. you, you often need a lot less than you think. Um, I find that my first drafts are like everything all on the page and then it's like oh I didn't need that I didn't need that I didn't need that and I mean I guess for you guys perhaps if we if strawberry picking was the way it normally was you would be in the room and maybe deciding those cuts now 
Um, did you that mean, does that mean your directors sometimes cut stuff and communicated with you while they were shooting it? Or did all of you sort of just hand it over completely? Or did they take the text and just do it exactly as you'd written it? Um, mine was definitely cut and changed. There were some scenes which weren't in there and then the ending was actually changed quite a lot from my original vision as well as like some dialogue which I think kind of changes the the meaning of of the play a bit so yeah um what about the rest of you this uh anything that you would add or change in the final pieces um I would want to make mine slightly longer because it was a lot shorter than I expected it to be mm -hmm. And I'd use that extra space to dive deeper into the characters' relationships with one another mm -hmm. um, to sort of show how um, they act different around different people they're around and who they're more comfortable around and sort of why they behave in that way. Yeah, that's great. It made you want to write more about them rather than mm -hmm. go, oh. Um, what about you? Uh, what about you, Arthur? Um, There's like hundreds of things I would change. Like, I thought, like, Almost every line, I was like, would, would a real person say that? Or if I decided that that's how humans sound like? I think, um, yeah. I um, And I, I think, like, yeah, I would add more to it. Because, again, like, I felt like it went really fast. And I feel like there were moments that I could have, like, yeah, I feel like I could have added more maybe to like, I don't know, I don't know. I don't really know where, but I just feel like I could have expanded it more. Has it made you any of you guys want to take those plays and keep writing them or does it make you want to write a different play? Yeah, I, I don't think I'm done with writing um, my play yet. I feel like I feel like I I really like the story that I wrote, and I'm like, yeah, I wanna I wanna write more of it and see what happens. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, what about some of the rest of you? Do you want to continue with this same piece, or do you make does it make you want to go like I want to write something completely different next? I don't know. I think I want to write something completely different, but I'd also want to go back and rewrite parts of the play with a lot of that in my heart and just, I don't know, just change it a bit. Hmm, interesting. Um, should I, I'm going to ask another question here, actually. So uh, on this note about rewriting and changing things, were there any moments that through this process where you lost faith in your idea or you got total writer's block? What was that like? I'm gonna ask Thea. Um, when writing the play, I got writer's block quite a lot. Like it took me pretty much the whole time we had to write it and I handed it in like a week before. Mm -hmm. But when I handed it over to Alice to direct, I gained a lot of confidence in it because Alice already knew a lot about the play and I'd been very verbal with her about it beforehand. Um, and then she was like sending me all of her ideas and the storyboard she drew. And um, it got me really excited for it. So, yeah, I was I was pretty confident with her direction. Okay. Um, what about it? Uh, Elsa, did you have any massive writer's block moments and any tips for getting out of them? Um, yeah, I had loads. Um, like there was one point where um, our our script writing teacher Ben came in. He was and he asked for like, "How's it going?" And I was like, "I I don't." I remember just being like, being like, like, I've like lost faith completely. I just feel like everything I'm writing is terrible. I think, and and like, and I remember like sitting at my laptop, like there's there's no other words to write. I've like, I run out of like ways to write it. Um, but I just kind of like, let, like a tip maybe would be like, just take yourself away from it because I think mm -hmm. The more the more I was focusing on trying to find words, like the more they were escaping me, and like, um, like clearing my head and doing something else for a minute, and then coming back and like carrying on writing really helped me just to like keep like 
the like my momentum going for longer if that makes sense mm -mm -mm. but um, yeah I, uh, I remember working with a director who I'd like be, I'd be like, we've got to solve this scene. We've got to do it. And we'd be like rewriting over and over. And he'd be like, Let's just go for a walk. And I kept refusing. And then fi finally we did. And we like went for a walk and like talked it through. And it was just a massive relief. But I think sometimes you get this thing you're like, I've got to sort it out now. Like this scene is not working. And actually the best thing you can do is take a little break and forget about it for like a couple of days and come back. Yeah. Um, Emily, did you have any massive writer's block moments? I think I definitely got trapped in my head a lot when writing the play because I was so apprehensive about... Because obviously, usually whodunits are a lot longer than 20 minutes, half an hour. And so I had to sort of... And there's a lot of clues that are scattered throughout. And so I sort of had to condense it all. And I was so worried because I was like, well, it's far too obvious who the murderer is. But then if I write it like this, it's going to come out of nowhere and it's going to be so ridiculous. And I think it definitely helped because um, we workshopped the plays. So we would sort of talk about the plot and get other people to give their opinions. And I'd be curious to see sort of I don't know, I'd want to like set up a poll and see who everyone thought the murderer was sort of halfway through. But I definitely think after asking other people what would make them think that a person was guilty and I sort of did like a mini murder mystery within my workshop group. And I think hearing other people's opinion on like what proves guilt and what they would pick up on would definitely help me when I was trying to sort of figure out what kind of clues to write in. And so I think a lot of it is just, as you said, talking it out, going for a walk and ask, getting a new perspective, I think definitely helps. Mm. Uh, did you get writer's block, Lily? And how did you get out of it? Um, I think it was more so the build up to actually writing it, which is where I was kind of like, okay, what am I going to do? I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And then when I was workshopping my play, I was already starting to have ideas kind of come to me, like main main kind of ideas on what I wanted to write but when I workshopped it I was kind of more workshopping around like one particular theme instead of like the theme as a whole but when I actually sat down to write it I was like okay so I've got I'm gonna have this is the I had a general idea of what I wanted to to have and I, I don't know I think it's because I I did, I did kind of take quite a relaxed approach to it I, which is probably not the best thing but I was very um I don't know I just like quite easy going with it I didn't I, I don't know because I didn't really write with the intention of like okay yeah I definitely want it to be put on like has to be put on like, it was more so if it gets put on that'd be nice but also if I'm gonna write something I, I wanted to do it well I wanted to actually write something that I'd be proud of but at the same time I wasn't majorly concerned with it being put on I just wanted to write something which meant something to me Mm -hmm. and I don't know like ideas would just come to me at night and I don't know why I'm such a like active like writer at night I wrote the majority of it like really late at night like three to five mm -hmm. which is really not healthy at all but I don't know that's just when I got like my most like creative like drives yeah I mean does anyone else do that thing where you get your idea at like three and you like have to sit up in bed and quickly write it down and then go back to sleep again and you wake up in the morning and it's just like scribbles I've definitely done that a few times and been like, oh, this doesn't make any sense in the morning. But, um, so interesting, you, you all did have a moment of it, but you all dealt with it in slightly different ways, I suppose. Um, uh, here's a good one. Uh, if you could cast yourself as a character in your play, who would you choose? Uh, I've got Lily on my screen, so I'm going to start with you again. Um, I think... Probably the main character, probably um, Butterfly or maybe the mum. Because mm. I think I was writing the mum with kind of, you know, a lot going on with her. So I would, yeah, I want to explore it, explore, explore characters more. Um, Emily, who would you cast yourself as? Well, I did do a little bit of a self-insert when I wrote a play about a writer trying to write a play. Um, but I think if I had to choose a character, I'd probably say Death. I mean, I can't dance, 
and I probably wouldn't have as good as a delivery as Chloe did but <laughs> I think that would just be a really fun character and I think I wouldn't take it too seriously which would be nice cool uh Elsa I I actually don't know um because I don't I don't know I think I'd actually quite like to say um one of the producers in it just because like <laughs> yeah like I feel I feel like they were they were a cool part um and yeah they they're they're a cool part to they'd be a cool part to like explore how I would play them yeah interesting so not 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 close to you it'd be more like you wanted to try a different kind of character yeah uh Theo what about you um I would want to play Margot I think from it mm -hmm. she's very like a personal character and I would love the chance to try and play her um or I would maybe give Bodhi a shot even though he's a boy but I really like Bodhi's character um did you find and did you, any of you guys find yourself liking a, like really enjoying writing a character and and why was that who did you love writing and surprised you um, I loved writing the producers um, because, <laughs> because basically when, um, again, Ben, shout out to Ben, mm. I was talking to him about the play and, and he was like, what is it? Is it like a power thing? And then he said, like, is it like Macbeth? And then I was like, is it like Macbeth? Yeah, yeah. And, then, <laughs> and then I got it into my head that the, produ the producers were like the three witches um, in Macbeth. Then when I was writing them, I was trying to make them all like eerie and stuff like that. So I had, I I had like loads of fun imagining them as the witches from Macbeth. Hmm. Oh, interesting. Um. I'm gonna. So, it, you talked a bit about Ben, who was teaching you guys. How did you use the workshops you did in your script writing lessons to support you in writing your play? Were they, how did it work? Because a few of you have mentioned the workshop period. What what was it like? Um, Emily, do you? Yeah, sure. Um, I think the workshops were definitely sort of a trial period where you could sort of get perspective on the ideas you were having. Mm -hmm. um, I think I was quite lucky in the fact that a lot of the people in my workshop were sort of people I worked with quite well and sort of knew. Um, and I think it definitely influenced the dynamic because a lot of the time, like you would observe things like people being like, we've got to listen to this thing. No, we got to do this thing. And sort of like a lot of people would be having a lot of jokes. And I would sort of like think of that and be like, ah, I should like write that into the play. So I think it helped with the dynamic a lot of um, sort of, you know, what would happen if, people interacted that way because I gave everybody a character and we did some improv exercises so it definitely allowed me to make my characters more more dimensional uh, than they would have been if I hadn't done a workshop mm. wow interesting um Elsa what did you find did you find it useful how did you use it yeah um I so I had like written a few like like first drafts of scenes mm. for, for them to read. And so in, in my first one, in my first one, the play was still like a comedy about co-hosts hating each other. And then from them reading that and me like um, giving them like kind of a rundown of who the characters were, they were like, um, oh, well, I could see it in the seventies. And I was like, oh. And then that's when the shift happened to the next Part. So by the time my next um, workshop came around, I was able to like, like share where the play had like gone to then, and like I, I again had them read, read through. I'd written in Graham's monologue about what what had happened, and um, I got them to perform it, and I got to like, yeah. So I got to like hear their criticisms of it, and like. Play, play around with delivery of it and stuff like that. So, yeah, find it really helpful. Yeah. Cool. Um, what about you, Thea? 
Um, mine's pretty similar to everyone else. I like wrote monologues that I got certain people of the workshop to perform um, just to see how they did it basically and maybe add some of their characteristics to the character. Um, I also got them to listen to music that for me provoked emotion to see what emotions it would make them feel. And then I then got them to mind map it and write out how the song made them feel or draw images that came to mind. Um, and then I had like some questions I asked them. Okay, so you kind of, you got their ideas involved in your piece as well as your own ideas? Yeah. Uh, okay, cool. Um, uh, Lily, what about you? Um, I, yeah, I, I workshopped one particular scene with, um, with them and that kind of solidified that I was definitely gonna kind of use that as a as a as a theme and I, I still wasn't really sure what I was gonna how I was gonna approach the theme but I was like yeah I'm gonna that's gonna definitely be a theme in it but um I really enjoyed working in those workshops I think for me that's probably like one of my like highlights of year 12 was getting to work with those people in um, that kind of workshop setting because it did really inspire me and I thought they were all really great actors. So it just, it was nice being able to, yeah, just work with them. Yeah, I mean, I think working with actors on your and a director on your script, even at really early stages, is really, really helpful. Um, so if you've got access to that, I always think it's a brilliant tip to just you guys can do it you've all got friends in your year that you can just send give them a bit of a script and ask for a read um it always seems really helpful to take your stuff to the next level um now we've got like five minutes so i'm wondering there's one last question here and then if anyone wants to send us another that's what you're welcome to um and i might ask you guys one as well but um this one's quite a quick fire one but if you if you could cast any major actor in the play as one of your characters who would it be I guess you might need a moment to think about it. Oh, God. <laughs> Maybe it's the baddie in your show you want. <laughs> it's quite a toughie, isn't it? Who would be maybe the worst person to cast in your show? <laughs> maybe that's a good place to begin. <laughs> Um, I, I feel like, uh, um, for Graham, I would want to cast, I don't know if I have like a major actor in mind, but like, I'd want to cast like, like someone who is a, na a national treasure now, like, mm. like, um, I don't know. I can't think of any actual, like, I, oh, I don't know, but like someone who is known in the industry, who's known like in the industry and in like the UK for being a really nice guy. Yeah, yeah. I can't quite think on who, who I would cast. Yeah, yeah. What about you? Anyone else got a thought of someone they'd really love to have? Or type um, of actor? I thought maybe for Margot, uh, actress Amy Lou Wood from Sex Education, who mm -hmm. plays Amy. Yeah. And then, um, for Bodhi, I thought Mark McKenna. He's in Wayne, which is a new TV show, but he sort of gives me Bodhi vibes. Cool. Did any of you kind of see an actor or a type of character while you were writing? Or did you just, you didn't, you didn't see any famous I saw actors. like classmates, like people ah, in the class who I thought could play these characters. Yeah. I, yeah, I saw hosts of CBC shows. <laughs> <laughs> Um, did any of the rest of you get any have any kind of major actors in mind or sort of a, a vision of the character? Um, I don't know. You know, I'm I'm trying to think now, but um, I feel like I could maybe put what's his name, um, Timothy Chalamet in there somewhere. Just have him in there because he's really nice. So. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Why not? Emily, do you got any major actors in mind that you'd? I'd want like Morgan Freeman to be frank because I think he's really good at sort of having that sort of very relaxed and calm sort of atmosphere about him but mm. then when he gets threatened he gets so much more intense and it makes it so much more intense knowing that he's 
such a calm and chill guy. And also his voice is just so lovely to listen to. So if he was in a radio play, I'd love yeah, that. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Um, well, thank you so much, you guys. Um, it's been brilliant watching your pieces and talking about them with you. Um, especially this very unique year where you've had to do it in a completely different format. Um, I Just like a last question for you guys before we then say bye, if that's all right, Sarah. Um, what has this made you want, what do you want to do next? Do you want to carry on writing? What's your like next idea that you'd love to do? I'm just going to go through with you. So I've got Thea second on my screen. Um, um, from the writing today that we did with you earlier, when we had to quick write about mm. it and doing the 20 questions, I just thought of the story about the boy and then like the location I picked was at a rave and I started having ideas for his story. So that's maybe something I'd like to dive into. Cool. What about you, Elsa? Do you want to carry on writing? Do you have another project you'd like to look at? Um, yeah, I like I've wanted to write for like ages now, like from like I think since I was like 13, I've been like writing down ideas for like shows and sketches and whatever. So um, definitely this is like I haven't got an idea, but like <laughs> but like it's definitely something I want to go into in the future. Mm -hmm. yeah. um emily what about you um i definitely don't think i'm done with this play i think i'd want to rewrite it and maybe see what it could be if it was live um i want to keep writing i think i've looked into some creative writing courses at university so i think writing is definitely something that i don't think i'm done with yet mm -hmm. cool Great. That's, it's nice to hear that you're all interested in it. Um, Lily, what about you? Do you have any like, kind of... Um, like Emily said, um, I, I wouldn't... I guess with what I wrote about, I'd maybe want to write it again, but look at a different, different aspects of it or write it in a different way with a different tone in mind. And also, I don't know, I still like an idea about writing like about a train conductor. I don't know why, like... I wanted to write about a train conductor. And then also I want to like write something about, I don't know, like write a play about righteousness and narcissism. I don't know, it's just that idea to me sometimes, doesn't it? That's cool. So, but I mean, you've all got the idea that you want to continue writing. It hasn't deterred you, which is great news. Um, so um, I guess, yeah, let's just, it's been so nice talking to you guys um, and getting your thoughts. I'm feeling pretty inspired as well. So I'm glad, um, yeah, and the pieces are all brilliant. They're all really different. They're all really, I feel, really lend themselves to, to being in this new format, even if that's not the way you originally intended them. Um, and, yeah, good luck with the rest of it and good luck with the rest of the festival. Um, Sarah, should I just leave yeah. the meeting? I'm, I'm back. I'm back. I'm here. Thank you so much, Tanisha. That was fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing all your thoughts, writers. Um, and we are back at 2.15 to speak to the directors with Ola Ince. Yeah. Panelists, if you want to stay where you are for two secs, I'm just going to stop streaming to YouTube. Um, but yeah, also a reminder, everybody, if you've watched uh, something, listened to something, you can take part in our Theatre 503 inspired rapid rights project. Uh, so those uh, scripts need to be in by the end of tomorrow, uh, ready to share on Thursday. Uh, all the stuff, all the info is on um, the website. Great. Thanks, everyone. I'm going to stop.